Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Mike, and you are listening to Hammer. Um, to, on today's episode, we have part two of our interview with Mike Potts. If you were with us last week, you heard Mike talking about his Major League Baseball career. Mike, what's going on, man? Man, glad to be back again, man. Uh, you ready to rock this yes, second segment? All yes, right. Sir. So we, we we left off with uh, 1996. You tore your labrum, you got sent to Mexico, and you yep. were like, that's it, man. Yep. I think baseball is out of the picture. And uh, you made a transition to the law enforcement career. Correct. Uh, I did. So tell us, man, what happened? Well, I, uh, when I got home, I, I needed to, you know, find me a job, you know, <coughs> to get back into, you know, to the civilian world. You know, baseball was, you know, it, it was a job, but, you know, it was uh, – you know, also a passion, but so, you know, I put in applications with a, you know, Raleigh Police Department, Durham County, Durham City, and, um, you know, I, I know I wanted to be in larger departments, so, you know, uh, Durham County called first, and that's where I went, so I went through the 17-week school they had and became a uh, Durham County deputy. I, I love my time with Durham County. Um, you know, I was fortunate enough to you know, I was, in, I was in good shape, you know, then. And, uh, you know, so I was, uh, became a canine officer. Loved, loved that. Kept me within, the, you know, the bank robberies, the car chases, uh, you know, home invasions or whatever, you know, just mm-hmm. tracking people, you know, and it was, it was, it was, it was a lot of fun, you know, doing that with, with my, with my partner being, uh, sassy was, you know, mm-hmm. it's not a real, Manly name. <laughs> Sassy. Sassy. So that was your dog's name, yeah. Sassy. Yeah. Okay. So they, gotcha. they said, yeah. uh, hey, we're going to put all the uh, dog's <laughs> names on the car. And I was like, please don't put Sassy on my patrol car. Who names these dogs? It, they came from the department. And uh, the dogs, when they come, uh, well, the canines, when they come from overseas, uh-huh. train, they name them. And that's like, really? Oh, so these dogs are trained for what, military purposes well, first? Um, or? you know, tracking, you know, yeah. so, uh, you know, the you know, sniffing out drugs and, you know, um, my canine was ball driven. So she wanted the ball. So she knew what was coming if she did what she was supposed to do. You know, we're finding the drugs or finding the person that a ball was going to come out. Mm-hmm. And I would throw the ball out and she'd attack it and have good, good time with it. And, you know, that's what she loved. But mm-hmm. uh, unfortunately, I lost her and uh, God, when I lose her. Uh, I had her in 98 and I had her to 2009. Uh, great companion, loved her. Uh, spent more time with her than I did anybody else, but, yeah. um, but you know, during my time with, uh, the sheriff's office, I realized that I love traffic and mm-hmm. I made the decision. I wanted to become a North Carolina state trooper. So I applied, that was an extremely long process. Um, about, about a six month process. And, uh, I was accepted into the 104th basic school in 2000, February, 2001. And, uh, I was very, very excited, you know, for that. But, you know, after that first day, I remember pulling the covers up in my night, uh, that night going, what have I done? I left a perfectly good job to come here and, you know, cause we're a paramilitary organization, mm-hmm. you know, everything's structured. You know, 5 a.m. you wake up and, you know, 5.10 you better be in formation. It didn't matter if it's raining, snowing, anything like mm-hmm. that. So patrol school was very tough. That was probably one of the toughest things I've ever done in my life. But um, I was proud to become a member of the North Carolina Highway Patrol, and um, I loved every second of it. Uh, so, was, so was the training, like, w- would you say harder? Oh, and very. state state troopers, what made it so much harder besides the wake up calls? And uh, was it the PT, the book work. Uh, when you go through there, there's there's thirty weeks. You 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 live in Raleigh for thirty weeks. So uh-huh. Everything's structured. Your your day is structured from five a.m. to nine fifty nine at night. Somebody had their hand on that light at nine fifty nine, and when the trip ten o'clock, you better have the light out and you better be in the bed. Don't feet don't touch ground until five a.m. That definitely sounds like oh, yeah. a it's a good looking man right there. There he is right there, <laughs> folks. Um <laughs> I mean, look at this guy. How old were you right there, Mike? I was uh 
Golly, that was 2001. That's when I started with Highway Patrol. So I, I graduated. I went in February and I graduated in August. And uh, yeah, that's a that was our graduation picture. So you went from this. I'm showing the uh, baseball picture right now. <laughs> yeah. So you went from the baseball to the state trooper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, you're looking sharp there, bro. You look oh, really man. young, definitely they, like in your 20s. They will keep time. you in shape, that's for sure. You know, the five-mile runs every morning, the push-ups, sit-ups, and <clears throat> everything that come along with it. It didn't matter, like I said, if it was raining or snowing mm-hmm. on the ground. I remember laying on a block of ice. Oh, my and, God. Uh, sometime uh, late February, and uh, – yeah, it was. Oh. Sounds a lot it like was, the military. It was. It was, it was grueling. It, was, it very yeah. was. It was. Uh, it was not a joke. So let's go to your. I, you graduate basic, okay? So what happens when you graduate basic? Do they put you on with ride along status, or are you just get in the car and you're out there? They assign you to a to a troop in a district, which I was assigned to, mm-hmm. Vance County, which is a combination of Vance, Warren, and Franklin County. And uh, so I was with uh, what they call an FTO, a field training officer. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they just taught you how to, you know, work your wrecks, taught you the lay of the land, you know, how to get around and all that good stuff. And um, it was, that was a different experience, man. It was, you know, a lot of things happen up in Vance County. No, I I (laughs) can imagine. (laughs) It was was an eye opener. I was like, wow. You so know. what did you see, like, right out of basic training with your FTO, ride along with him? What was something that you look back at and you go, what the fuck? <laughs> that was like your reality check, like, this is it. What well, have I done? Uh, my my training officer was 6'5", about 235 pounds. He was – Big dude. Was something that you yeah. want to – you, you'll see in, like, a muscle magazine. He was just a – and once it got to the point where I started driving – when I stopped a car, they saw him get out, and then now they want to, um, they want to get out and engage him. And I'm like, "Are you crazy? This guy's huge. I mean, and why you, why you start yelling at him for no reason? You know?" And this was on just something out and about, or a traffic stop, or a seatbelt ticket. Seatbelt ticket. Yeah. yeah, and it was they get out and they want to holler at him, and I'm like, "You know, now you need to talk to me. I don't know what your engagement is with him, but." I don't want to try that guy, you know, you know, but, uh, they wanted to try a lot of things in Vance County that, that Mm. I saw, you know, I'm speaking from my own experience, you know, up there, but it was, uh, it was some trying times up there. It was a lot of, uh, how long were you in Vance County? How how long was that until they moved you on? uh, How does that work? How do you move? Well, you have to do at least one year there. I did a year in Vance, and then I transferred to Granville and Durham County. Uh-huh. Uh, of course, that's where I live here in Granville. And, uh, you know, wanted to be home. and um, But it, it, it became tough because I just knew so many people around Granville County. Mm-hmm. So I spent a lot of time on the interstate, you know, and you you know, you know get speeds up there well over 100 miles an hour at times. You know, it was just, you know, it was tough, you know. But, uh, the, you know, at the times, you know, I, I worked in Durham, so I knew how to get around Durham very well. Mm-hmm. And it was, I would just spend a lot of time down in Durham. Yeah, it's a little bit, a little bit easier to work down there, and um, just didn't run into people that I knew. Yeah, so it was that made it tough. So let's uh, let's go to I believe it was uh, what was that I just had it right here. More technical difficulties. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> we got it. okay. So on February eighteenth, two thousand thirteen, tell us about that night. T- tell us oh. what happened. Um, I'm sure that's a date that lives in infamy oh, yeah. with you. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, the weird part about that that whole scenario was, you know, my my son was four four years old, and um, he was. Yeah, you know, I, I got off at five o'clock that morning on the eighteenth. Mm. Came home to go to sleep. And uh, my, my wife had taken my son to daycare. And they called about 12 o'clock and said, hey, your son's sick. He's at the threshold for the fever. You got to come get him. Mm-hmm. So I called my wife and I tell her, I said, you know, hey, you know, my son's sick. You know, she goes, well, I want to get off work anyway, so I'll go get him. I said, okay, that's fine. 
So I go on back to sleep, and she gets home, and I was supposed to do a um, two to two to midnight on the 18th, mm -hmm. and uh, 2 p.m. to midnight. And I said, uh, well, I'll just stay home with him. That's fine. So we're kind of arguing back and forth who's going to stay home, who's going to do what. And finally, I just said, well, I mean, if you want to stay here, if you're off already and you got him, I'm, I'll just go on to work. And I went and saw, you know, the sheriff of Durham County at the time was Mike Andrews. Mm -hmm. um, had a lot of respect for him. And he, uh, you know, I, I just didn't, I, I would always go back to see the sheriff, whether it was Worth Hill at the time. Everybody loves Worth Hill. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just, I wanted to. I didn't forget where I come from. So I'd always go back there and see him. So me and my partner, uh, we were, said, you know, where are we going to go work at? We have to go do some seat belts. And uh, we decided that we were going to go to 98, mm -hmm. uh, uh, 98 near 70. And we are going to work seat belts because we tried, we tried to work different areas of the county, you know, with north, south, east, west. And, you know, didn't want to concentrate in one area. Now, when you say work seat belts, uh, you're – you're saying you're just going to catch violators for something. Right, right. Now, okay, I got a question. How hard is it to see that? It's, to very, see? it's, it's very easy. It's very easy? It, it is. Yeah. You know, and I, I'm being totally honest with you. Uh -huh. if, you're, if you're watching, you know, and, and, and here's the thing. I, I was sitting in a used car lot. Uh -huh. I used that a lot because I had a black unmarked charger. It had no markings on it. And I would sit there, and I was kind of raised up over 98 near 70. And I was looking, you know, and, you, and I got a few that day. But they're easy, you know. Mm -hmm. it, it, it truly is. If you're if you're looking for it, if, you, if you're specifically looking for it, you it's easy tell. to find. You can see them not clicked right. in. Okay. Right. So, you know, on that particular day, I'm sitting in a used car lot, and I see a guy in a black Nissan Maxima um, driving down the road. He's leaning up on the steering wheel. Clearly has no seatbelt on. Mm -hmm. What time was this? This was at 6 o'clock. Six o'clock. Six p.m. Okay, so it was still light out. Yeah. There, so okay. I'm sitting there looking. I said, you know, but the, to be perfectly honest, um, I looked when he went by. I saw thirty day tags on mm -hmm. the car. Well, I didn't want to. The way e citation worked is, you could put in the tag number, populate the driver's mm -hmm. license number, and the ticket's done in less than ten seconds. Yeah. But if you don't have the tag number, you got manually put it, put everything in. It's going to take you about five minutes. I wasn't a very good typer yeah. on the computer in the car. but So I said, God, I don't want to mess with that. And so he turns on, gets on US 70 uh, toward 85, and I was like, ah, let me go get it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so get up there and stop him um, right there just before Cheek Road in uh, Durham, if anybody knows where that's at. Um, and get up to the car, and that, um, you know, he's putting the seatbelt on, and, you know, he's too he's, late, sucker. Yeah, that's what I told him. I said, don't put it on now. That's what I stopped you for. Uh, yeah. You know? And uh, so about that time, you know, a car runs off the road, has a rumble strip. And I mm. hear that. Yeah, yeah. Of course, you know, my attention gets drawn to that for just a second. I turn back around. I got a gun in my face. So no. I'm like, this is not now, good. Before the rumble strip, okay, uh, did was there any kind of sign uh, that hey maybe this could be something he give off a vibe or like maybe was he anxious he, acting or you know I've, I've stopped over a thousand cars in my career yeah and but I've always heard about seeing the pulse in the neck mm -hmm. and I could see the pulse in his neck so he was he was amped up and uh, mm -hmm. he was rubbing his legs you know like rubbing the sweat off your you know your hands mm -hmm. yeah and um, I remember very vividly when I turned he was reaching. And underneath his right knee was a 380. Come find out later on, it was a 380. He spins in the seat and he shoots me five times. So now, what's know, going on through your mind when you see that gun? Oh hell, I can't get away from this now. No, yeah. it's here. It is, and uh, you know, once you know. It was very strange because still to this day I can see that that the bullet chambered down the barrel. It was just right there. Mm -hmm. You can see it just as plain as day. I can still see it right the second. And uh, once the rounds went off, I immediately lost hearing, lost color vision, couldn't see in color for uh, really what seemed like hours was more or less 
seconds probably. Yeah. Uh, I, re- I really don't know how to answer that, but I just remember seeing it in black and white. And um, once it was over with, I just I wanted to – I felt that there was two 20,000-pound weights on both my shoulders. I couldn't get away from it. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if that's from the shock of – the shock wave of the – the round coming out or or what and uh popular pots over there <laughs> blowing up <laughs> and uh i just i wanted to get away i wanted to stop because i couldn't get to my gun yeah and uh so finally I hit the ground i roll out and i draw my gun and once i get to my my front left headlight you know i, I extended and i was going to shoot and he was already driving off well well at that point did you even know you were hit i had that- no pain I just knew, I knew I was hurt. I, I knew I was hurt. But uh, I didn't realize to what extent. I thought he might have missed. Yeah. You know, even though he was uh, seven inches away from my face. And um, so once I got back to the car, I extended to shoot. And, I, you know, I thought that, you know, what if I hit somebody else? Yeah. You know, I don't. So... I made that decision. I'm going to get in the car, and I'm going to fuse my car with his car. I'm going to wreck him. Yeah. We're going to end this. So we're we'll have a shootout. At this point, did he just let you go? Did yeah. he take off? Oh, he, took he, off. he wasn't even coming out the car to like, no. finish off anything. Or he just took no. off. No. Had, had he had got out of the car that day, we would have never had a trial. Then RIP, son. That would have been sayonara, buddy. Yeah. Because you would have lost your life right there in that second. Well, I, I think he's doing better now. He's got life in prison, right? Uh, he's so. on death row now. Oh, well, that's even better. We'll get to that. I don't think you even know this. <laughs> no, I, I've read a couple of articles today following up for this okay. interview. Okay, so you probably know. Um, yeah. But no, you can tell yeah. it all. Yeah. Tell it all, yeah. Um, So, you know, I get back to the car, and I remember looking down, and I said, son of a... And I looked down, and my, my gray uniform was completely red. Uh. And I went, well, wait a minute. I look in the mirror... You know, I had two bullet holes. Uh, one's, you know, I don't know if they can see or not, but one's uh, about an inch and a half below my right eye uh, that went into a sinus cavity. The other one went into uh, my jaw through my ear canal and came out the back of my neck. Yeah. The bullet did finally come out. I don't know if I ever told you that either, but I have a picture I'll show you later. So both but, bullets came out? or Well, they pulled, they had surgically removed the one here, uh-huh. but the one in the back of my neck, that, that big lump that I had for years. Yeah, yeah, okay. It finally worked its way out and fell out. Oh, well, that's uh, good then. Yeah. yeah shit. So um, once I, I, I just freaked out. I said, I'm yeah. going to die now. So now I'm, I'm going through the whole um, um, Bruce Willis uh, lands on the meteor. Armageddon thing. Armageddon. Yeah. So I'm going through the whole Armageddon before he sets off the the nuclear bomb where he's seeing his daughter get married and the grandchildren. Making phone calls and stuff? Yeah. Or, yeah. So I'm sitting there like, you know, I'm seeing my son, my daughter. I'm not going to see these people anymore. And I'm like, for what? Mm-hmm. For a seatbelt ticket? That's what I stopped him for, a seatbelt ticket. Well, little did I know, uh, he had hit 209 sticks of dynamite. Within, in the car right then? In the trunk of the car. This was, this was uh, and this is a very touchy subject for me. I, I don't talk about it very much, but this was right after Sandy Hook. Yeah, okay. This was about yeah. a month or two after uh, Sandy Hook incident occurred. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, didn't know what this guy's intentions were. You know, this, you know, the Sandy Hook uh, thing that occurred, you know, that was just somebody wanted to go in and be a massacre. Yeah. Uh, but he had had... You know, all the EMS and police stations and uh, fire stations, a map of all of them. Well, his whole thing that I understood was those are places to stay away from. I don't know. You take it for what you know. But this was a um, this was a guy who was from Vermont that um, who had did 27 home invasions, violent home invasions, you know, beating people in the head with a hammer going. This guy. Whoa, he actually beat people in the head yep. with hammers? Oh, yeah. So this guy was a criminal anyway. Oh, absolutely, yeah. So I'm just sitting here thinking, because I did read that about the dynamite. Mm-hmm. What in the fuck is he going to do with all that dynamite? That's... You possibly stopped a terrorist. And that's where, yeah. yes, absolutely. I mean, yeah. yes. And I'm glad that everything was able to be recovered because, mm-hmm. you know, the good Lord spared me that day. And I know he's by my side that day. Mm-hmm. He spared me. And I'll take that injury over possibly 
hundreds, if not thousands, of people dying. Yeah. You know, from whatever was on this boy's mind. He was, uh, you know, he was not a friendly person. You know, you're being people yeah. in there saying, where's your money, where's your money, where's your money, where's your money? You know, uh, he got furloughed from Vermont. You know, this this type of person was furloughed from Vermont for doing what he did. Well, evidently all roads lead to Durham, and here he comes. Was he just passing through Durham on the interstate, he or was, what, what was he doing? Did he, he live here? Or? He was living in Briar Creek um, at the apartments if you're – Eastbound on 70, there's apartments mm-hmm. before you get to Briar Creek, right there on the uh, right. Okay. That's where he's living. Mm-hmm. Um, him and his girlfriend, she was pregnant at the time. And uh, so he ends up um, shooting me and getting away. So. But you uh, called. You, you, I, you, I called, like, you called yeah, back up, came. Called everybody in and. Uh, Told them the car, told them everything, which I had an in-car camera too, so that was easy for them to look back and say, all right, well, we can view everything right now. Got the tag number off the car, found out where it come from, got all the, every, all the information from the uh, car lot that he bought it from. Is that footage available? Can you see your dash cam footage? Yeah, well, I, um, it's not available to public. Okay. I have a copy of it. Um, but just not, not ready to see it or no, take but. a look at it or anything like that. Um, they do use it for training port purposes within the Highway Patrol, which yeah. that's fine. As long as it's helping somebody. I know because um, I'm in law enforcement, too. Right. I don't really talk about it that much. But we, we have a lot of training videos, and it's all dash footage. Just There's so much dash footage right. that we see. And um, I've never seen yours. I yeah. figured that maybe this one was like kept away somewhere. Well, or... they they uh, thank God they did. Uh, you know, I asked for it not to be released. Yeah. Um, you know, WRL and all them people tried to get it and stuff like that. And I asked them. I said, just just leave it alone. Yeah. Yes. Because once that's out, then my son and my daughter have access to seeing that. I I just mm. don't want them to see it. You know, not until they say, hey, I want to see it. I yeah. want to see everything. They understand what's going on. Right. With it. Yeah. So it. Uh, you know, once all that occurred, you know, it, it seemed like it was hours. But I finally got to uh, Duke Hospital, and, you know, thank God for them people down there. They're incredible. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, they pretty much saved my life. And, uh, you know, I spent four days in the hospital. Um, you know, I had, um, you know, a lot of visitors and a lot of things that I really just don't remember about 2013. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. You know, and I still deal with some of those things, that, that aspect of that night. Uh, still to this day, but, you know, I just pretty much keep to myself and do my mm-hmm. own little thing and, you know, and just trying to try to get through that whole incident of, um, you know, of what happened that night. And um, then in October of 18, you know, I find out that this guy that, uh, that shot me was, you know, he killed seven prison guards at Pasco Tank Prison trying to in an in a escape. Wait, that was him? Yeah, that was him. He's the one that killed those prison guards in Pasco Tank? Yep, that's correct. I had no fucking clue yeah. that was the guy. I heard about it yep. because... Um, October of 17 or 18. I remember that. Um, oh, wow. I had no yeah. idea it was him. Yeah, he orchestrated all that. Oh, so, my God. Therefore, I was uh, awarded the opportunity to go to his uh, death sentence here. Uh-huh. And they uh, they did, you know, send, send, send us him to death, which, I mean, come on. This guy wow. right here has done a lot. If ever there was a useless human being that deserved a death oh, penalty, yeah. this is one. And this is when I get frustrated with all these people that think, prisons should be emptied and we should abolish the death penalty. There are human beings, folks, that don't deserve to live. Exactly. And this is one of them because yeah. they contribute nothing to society but violence. There's no rehabilitation for these folks at no, all. You, 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 can you only... did it in prison. <laughs> you, killed, uh, you killed seven people in prison. I remember this because uh, we were supposed to go to Pasco Tank to do some pickups yeah. for ICE and... Um, yeah, Pasco Tank was shut down for the longest. Yes, sir, it was. And uh, I had no All idea. All because of him. 
I had no idea. Was it yeah. him alone? It was him uh, and two other guys. Two other guys. Yeah. One, the other guy was in there for burglaries, which he, he had, you know, he's going to do his time. Mm-hmm. But the other guy was in there for secondary murder. So those two didn't have nothing to lose. Yeah. You know, but unfortunately, seven people and, you know, God knows how many, you know, children they had and mm-hmm. you know, mothers and fathers. They lost, their, lost their, their, their child because of. Oh. This idiot. I don't know any other uh, way to put it than what did he have before he went in there? He had a life sentence though, right? He and uh, no, he he had uh forty six years with me. Forty six. Yeah. Oh. <coughs> but well, federal time. Yeah. So you get the you know, you gotta do what is it, ninety? Ninety percent? Is that correct? Or uh, I don't know. I'm not too yeah. sure about the sentence so far. Well he yeah. he was what, twenty three when this yeah. went down? Yeah. So he would have been an old man anyway. Right. But now, hopefully, fuck him. Yeah, I've yeah. asked to be the witness to the when I say a minister. I hope I'm still alive. Yeah. And uh, so far, right now, I've been granted the ability to go watch him be put to death. I, uh, I how long I, you think this is going to take? Seventy years. <laughs> so, <laughs> the way well, the, the that, way everything goes right now. Well, but, I only uh, hope in the time he serves. I'm assuming they probably got him at the Max in Raleigh Central. Um. um I'm not really at liberty to say where he's at, but he's not in the state. Oh, okay. Well, I hope wherever he's at. Right. Uh, there's a lot of people don't know. I used to work at the Ad Max right. for the federal in Colorado. Yeah. And these dudes um, are locked in 23 hours a day. Uh, he one is now. hour of wreck. Minimal yeah. contact with COs. Right. So I hope that's exactly what he's doing. Oh, I hope doing he deteriorates right and rots, and yeah. this is over with. Very quickly for him. Now, did his girlfriend get any time too, or she served a little bit of time? But like I said, she was pregnant yeah. at the time of the incident, um, and she, I think she did nine months for harboring a fugitive. Okay. And um, she moved back to Vermont. Um, you know, a lot of the, um, you know, ask me, say, are you mad? Mm-hmm. Well, it depends on what day you ask me. Yeah. You know, I don't. Some days I'm, you know, I lost, I lost a great job. Mm-hmm. I loved, I loved the Highway Patrol. Loved doing what I did. Uh, I treated people good. I treated them fairly. And I did my job. Yeah. And, you know, I miss it. And, uh, but, you know, now I look back and uh, what's going on in today's world within law enforcement. Mm. And it's, it's extremely scary. Um you know, I, I worked uh, with two large agencies, and I've worked along the side of a, a, a many agencies before, and I've just never seen, I, I, I didn't see this back when I worked, and I, I did yeah. it 17 years. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's, I feel sorry for the men and women out there now that are, yeah, they're on the grind. It's, like I go back to your incident, You like you said, you've made hundreds of traffic stops. Yeah. And I'm sure you never had one escalate like this. This is probably the only one, right? Well, I mean, you probably had some well, rough ones, but right. Well, you know, it's, there's a difference when you when you tell somebody um, that they're under arrest and they say, "Not today." Yeah, you better call somebody. Mm-hmm. You know, that's a, that's a different kind of altercation than, "Hey, you stepped on my shoe," or "Hey, yeah. you bumped into me." I mean, it's trying to fight for his life. Yeah, you know, I'm talking about the the person that's getting his freedom talking taken away from him. That's a different kind of altercation that you're about to deal with. Um, so I, you know, I've had a few of those, but um, you know, nothing like this. You know, I've been shot at one time before when I was a deputy. Mm-hmm. You know, back down in the the old few gardens, but 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 you, you don't know. know you don't know what this next traffic stop's going to be. Right. You know, you can right. go a whole, I don't know, y'all work 10 hours a day or eight Yeah, hours. so, yeah. So, yeah. you know, you can go all day, you can pull over 20 people, and, hey, all of them will be like, I'm sorry, officer, I won't yeah. do it again. Yeah. And then you always have that one chance, you know, yeah. you, you like you had away. in Durham. Um, and what gets me is these people that want to go out there and defund police, and, you know, they want to say, you know, I we mean, don't need cops, we need social workers, all this shit. No. You know, I'm like, you why don't you ride along with some of these guys? You know, officers, they have split-second decisions they have right. to make because uh, you, you never know. What you think is going to be a peaceful altercation, like yeah. you get called to a house for a domestic disturbance, you never know what's going to happen, yeah. man. You, oh, absolutely. Well, I yeah. promise you this right here, and I've, ta- I've had this conversation many times before, and I hope I don't like going but um, these incidents, 
I, I'll, I'll never be shot by a police officer, and I can tell you that right now. Whether I'm no, I did nothing wrong, or I did something wrong. I'm just going to do what you say, what you tell me to do, and I'm going to get that incident over with quickly so I can go home. Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep my mouth shut. This is me. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking from my experience. And then I'm going to go home, and I, if I need to go to court and argue it, that's what a courtroom's there for. Argue it there. Not on the side of the road. Yeah. I'm not going I'm not going to cause an altercation with you to the point you get uncomfortable and you know, I'm going to fight you and then I may be shot, I may not be. Like why do, why I do people do that? I mean, what do they think they're gaining out of this? Do they think Nothing. they're going to win an argument when a, a police officer on the side of the road? You're not. Or in a driveway somewhere? Right. Um I don't know why people just can't take the high road and, you know, even if it's false. Right. Even even exactly. if hey, you know, if yeah. this is bullshit, just say yes sir, officer, yes yeah. sir. I'm gonna get it over um, with quickly. This is me. Like I said, this that's only me. I'm just gonna do what you tell me to do. Yeah. Like I said, if I'm in the wrong or if I know I did nothing wrong and you I know you have the wrong person, we'll just argue it out in court. Yeah. What's the worst that's gonna happen to me? I might have to pay yeah. a little bit of money. Yeah, I I mean I don't, I don't want know. to, but I mean at least I still got my life. Our our cops are in a bad spot these days. Yeah. Uh you know, retire officers are retiring everywhere um in many minnesota oh god uh, they've lost so much of their police force yes. uh you know even and, around here yeah people know, don't like, want to go to the police cab who wants to be a cop these days no. nobody nobody no. wants to do it i mean you got a camera in your face every time you do anything oh yeah even with me we've got some fucking guy that sits outside our office every morning with a camera with yeah. video on us trying to put us on facebook and how we're taking away rights from people right. and it's like you know what man if yeah. there weren't police this country would be a fucking champ it would be in but, it would be insane and need yeah. more of them and don't get me wrong i know you got shit bag cops out there absolutely you yeah. you've got shit bag cops like you've got shit bag doctors lawyers you know you got all walks of life you got shit bags yeah, absolutely but you can't 100%. you can't blame the shit bags I mean, right. the good cops because of what the shit right. bags do. There's more good out there than there is bad. Yeah. You know, in my opinion, I, you know, I just I can only speak from my experience of what I've saw. You <coughs> yeah. Know, and I've met people within, you know, the FBI, the uh, U.S. Marshals, Durham mm -hmm. Police Department, Highway Patrol, whatever, whatever you want to say. I mean, I just I met a lot of them. Yeah. They, they seemed the way I was. So in yeah. 2013, after all this is said and done. Um, like, what did you get out of this? Uh, did, did something click in you, and did you get like some kind of revelation? Of, Man, I you know? I loved life. I you know, I just uh, you know I didn't want to I didn't want to if somebody wanted to talk to me, I wanted to give them the opportunity to talk to me, mm -hmm. regardless of what you wanted to talk about. Yeah, you want to talk about the weather, or you don't even know who I am. You want to talk? I didn't shun things off no more. Like, why well, ain't got no time for you? Yeah. Well, all I want is time. I no. want more of it. You're not so, guaranteed it, bro. No, absolutely you're, you're not. You're definitely not guaranteed it. So, and I saw that on that day, and I from from that day forward, I just, you know, I, I wanted to. You know, I definitely changed my life. Yeah. You know, um, and I, I'm hoping, well, yeah, for the better. And uh, you know, things things have been good so far. Yeah. Um, you know, just uh, I miss I miss doing what I did. Mm -hmm. I just uh, <clears throat> I'm not that same person no more. I'm I'm wired a lot different now. Where I can't, I just I just cannot. I don't want to embarrass the state. Mm -hmm. I don't want to embarrass the Highway Patrol. I don't want to embarrass my family. So it, it was time to yeah. go. Well, you um, after the shooting, man. I mean, you were already kind of a celebrity before. You know, Major League <laughs> Baseball pitcher Potts, Mike Potts here. Everything um, falls in my life, man. I swear. But after the shooting, man, and you got back on your feet, 100. percent You kind of became like a little local celebrity doing the. New spots and yeah. went to the governor's mansion, right? I did. He, uh, he. And McCrory was governor back then. Yeah, he right? was. Okay. Um, you know, without uh, Pat McCrory was uh, an incredible guy. I'm I'm so thankful to know him now. Oh, he's better uh, than this slap nut we got oh, right I'm now. Oh, Jesus, bless uh, bless his heart. <laughs> you know, I mean that's all I can say. Yeah, uh, I had to get my shot in yeah. on Cooper tonight. <laughs> yeah. Right. But yeah, Pat McCrory was God. He he just. He did what he said he was going to do. He came to the hospital that night and saw me after the state of the state. Mm -hmm. he, he had delivered the state of the state. Come to the hospital, and he says, look, um, I want to feed you one time. And uh, I said, 
my mouth's wired shut, you know, because they broke mm-hmm. my, my jaw. Yeah. And he says, when that's healed, you call me. He said, we're going to have steak and lobster at the mansion. And he did it. He did what he said he was going to do. And, uh, man, I'll never forget that experience because when we got to the um, – to the mansion it was it was me and my wife uh my son my daughter and my son's uh now wife mm. never talked one bit about politics never he never said no he went around he found out everything about them and then when mm-hmm. he would call me uh or i'd call him you know we would talk we which still this day we talk once a month and uh, he would he would just ask oh well, how's kelly and tatum you know my my grandson now Mm-hmm. And he remembers these things, and he would always ask about them. You know, he's never talked politics at all. And uh, I, I did a commercial for Pat McCoy in uh, 2016 um, for his for his reelection, mm-hmm. and uh, and everything that I said in there was absolutely true. That's the way he is. He yeah. was a guy, just a great guy. I'm a better person for for knowing him now, uh, regardless of parties. You yeah, know, it's yeah. just you know, he's a he's a great guy. And I just love talking to him and finding out what's what's next for him. We miss him. Yeah. We miss him. I sure do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. God bless the state of North Carolina right now. Oh, man, I, I tell you. It's, Four more. So, uh, you know, did anybody from the baseball past reach out to you and um, say, uh, hey, man? Yeah, uh, Mike Matheny did. Uh, he was mm-hmm. the uh, – you know, he, he was our catcher uh, with the Brewers. Uh, turned out to be – he was the uh, – the manager of the St. Louis Cardinals when they won the World Series. Oh. Um, he, he reached out. Um, <coughs> you know, like I said, 2013 was kind of a blurry. I know he reached out. I don't know if it's by card, letter, or phone call. I can't, mm-hmm. I, I can't remember. A lot, a lot of things in 2013 are really a blur. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, you know, I just, I'm just trying to live life now and, um, you know, just reminisce on the days, you know, my baseball. You mm-hmm. know, I, I sit there and look back on it, think about that's 20, what is this, 20, uh, 24 years ago? Oh, wow. God, that's a long time ago. I'm, <laughs> you know, and I sit there and, and when I think about it, I think about it as yesterday. Yeah. You know, I was, you know, I played baseball. You know, I can do this, I can do that. Well, like I told you, I, Mudcats game, I hit 41 one night after the third throw. <laughs> Yes, like golly, bro. I I think He's in my so prime, <laughs> in my prime, I couldn't yeah. even throw. I think my top was sixty seven, so I've never had like a strong arm. Oh, man. Uh, I don't know. I God blessed me with a with a, you know, this five nine, you know, frame of mm-hmm. mind, and you know, the ability to throw the ball that hard, you know, and you know, like I said, uh, mm-hmm. in last week's uh, or the last podcast we did. Yeah, uh, you know, with Maddox being being able to watch him and you know, all you got to do is watch him. Oh, hell, he's people a learn from. <laughs> and he's just, I know he they they get no better. Well, you, know? you um, I, I think we talked about this at some point. You went to school with like the Zach Brown band or something mm-hmm. like that, right? Yeah, yeah, those yeah. guys. Um, you know, they're they're from my neck of the woods, and uh, my, my uh, the buddy who was in uh, the best man of my wedding. Mm-hmm. Um, Oh, my my first wedding. Wait, how many times have you been married? <laughs> Twice. <laughs> yeah. But I got a gold mine right now. I, uh, I, yeah. I, I this one right here is she's a forever keeper. No. Yeah. And uh, but uh, my first one, yeah, he was uh, he's the security for Zach Brown Band. Uh-huh. So every time they come to Raleigh, I'd be able to go hook up with them and stuff like that, and you know, go go backstage with them. Hey, you think you get Zach Brown on podcast? Hook hook him up Zoom. Man, I can try. <laughs> I can try. Uh-huh. We can do it. Uh-huh. Do it by Zoom. Yeah, we'll see, yeah, we will. We will work on that. Hey, man. We will work on that. <laughs> well, I tell you what, brother. I want to thank you for being on mine. Man, I tell you what. This is uh, probably one of the best ones I've ever had. Man, I'm I'm, um, I'm just glad to be here, man. To be able to to talk about it and hopefully, you know, touch somebody and you know just to see what those those men and women are going through out there and you know, give you just a one percent of what happens in you know baseball players' life and mm. you know. Man, you, you you've lived you? you've you've done some shit, I've man. Done, I've done some stuff, and we didn't even really touch on. Uh, you know, there's there's so much more. Yeah. I mean, it's just. Well, we're gonna have to have you back on. We'll and, do it again. Um, you can go over some more stuff. Yeah, maybe we can. We got to find out what's Mike Potts up to these days. Yeah, we can do that. You know, we can absolutely do that. From the mound to the to the ground. Pound. From the mound <laughs> to, to the. Ground. What's a good word for <laughs> the? Uh, I got to come up with a name yeah. for this podcast. I like from the mound to the to the crown. 
like Crown Vic. I like that. Yeah, <laughs> to the Crown Vic. <laughs> I don't think anybody will get that. <laughs> All right, well. I enjoyed it, bro. Mike, I want to thank you again. Thanks for coming out, man. Um, it's been a, been yeah, a pleasure having you on the, on the show, brother. All right. That was it. That was uh, uh, Mike Potts. Yeah. This was part two of our uh, interview. And, uh, man, it was awesome. So, hey. Uh, once again, check out uh, the Hammered Podcast. You can share it with your friends. We're on iTunes, Spotify. Uh, we're on your smart devices like your Alexa through uh, TuneIn. Uh, and check out this video on YouTube. Subscribe to the Hammered Podcast. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening. Peace. Later, Mike. Later, buddy. Appreciate you. All right. <laughs>